Good morning and thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup with me, Neeraj Shah. It's, uh, it's Tuesday and um, the, the global markets are, are mixed. Remember, our markets on the macro front have cues which are not necessarily the most positive. So the U.S. stock futures are little changed after S&P 500 and Nasdaq rose. But, but, one, crude prices have risen a bit. So now U.S. crude has risen more than 2% above $83 per barrel. Brent is above $86 a barrel. So crude prices are higher. So that's the first thing. And we also have treasuries uh, falling or yields moving up. So that's the other problem. In other news, uh, Donald Trump has, well, there's a verdict that has been passed, which effectively is a Trump immunity ruling. And therefore, that means any kind of trial before the election is unlikely. So therefore, there are no ish, there are no, there's nothing that will stop Donald Trump from contesting in November. And therefore, it's, a, it's now an open race between him and uh, Joe Biden. Uh, but it's a big ruling that happened overnight in the US and therefore important to highlight that. South Korean inflation has cooled more than expected towards the target. Now, while U.S. inflation is not, some of the other inflation targets are coming off. New Zealand is under a throes of from some unemployment issues as well. We might well start seeing interest rate cuts in other nations, even if the mother market does not do that. Um, <coughs> there is more. GST collections apparently in the month of June likely at about 1.74 lakh crores. So from an Indian perspective, this number continues to remain good, and that is actually a positive. Now, what did the U.S. markets do? Well, marginally higher. S&P 500 was in fact 0.27% higher. NASDAQ 0.66% higher. But the futures are unchanged. Asia was a bit mixed, if you will, for now showing a positive sign out here. But let's wait and watch if indeed we uh, get some bit of optimism from there off. Yes, indeed we do, about 54 odd points. And if indeed, therefore, we start above 24,200, then that's a big thing. And I'll tell you why on the trade setup. Now, let's get the trade setup up on the screen. I think the long short ratio is over 83% because it was over 83% or over 82% as of Friday's close. And I think yesterday there is even more long positions added. So the long short ratio is over 83%, which is the highest in a very long time. Significant long positions built in out here from the FI community end. And the market may look stretched, but these guys are coming on, piling on the long positions. In fact, if you look at the 24-200 strike as well yesterday, the call writers led the put writers quite convincingly. In fact, we missed the numbers here. I'll give you the numbers as well. The call writers were much higher, 1.62 lakh contracts versus put writers at 62,000 contracts, fresh option writing at the 24,200 strike. And therefore, this becomes the key pivot, right? Activity around this strike might well show. Now, if indeed the markets start off higher and stay firmly higher above 24,200, then these call writers will have to come and cover their positions, which might actually spur the indices even higher. So watch out for that as well. Um, Telecom is very likely to see bottom buying on all kinds of dips. Now, Vodafone idea saw a second dip yesterday, but Airtel, I think, had a marginally positive outing for a better part of trade yesterday. So, suffice to say that uh, while Telecom is likely a bit quiet, but almost everybody seems to believe that this is a buy on dips. In fact, there's a city note today, I'll talk about it later on, which is very constructive on Vodafone. So, could be interesting to see what happens there. And... The problem seems to be around continued weakness in truck volumes, which may hit CV players. Not exactly m and it's got a very small component there, but the likes of Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors, etc. Uh, seem a bit sluggish. And Tata Motors, the numbers viewers that came out post-market hours, not the best on the passenger vehicle side either. So maybe that's a stock that could actually react negatively in the session today. But speaking of stocks, let me get down to stocks. The first ones on my list, and these are the ones that I believe will get hit the most today. All of them. Now, what's happened is that SEBI's asked exchanges and market infrastructure institutions, which are MIIs, to charge members, which is these brokers, uniformly. Now, what happens? Also, MIs have been asked not to offer discounts based on trading volumes or activity. Now, what used to happen, viewers, and I'll try, I mean, the alert will come up on your screen as well. Because apparently, exchanges possibly charge lower fees to discount brokers on volumes. I'll simplify this for you. Uh, the numbers chosen are just for explanation. But let's say brokerages earn 100 rupees from clients. 
you and me. Let us say they had to pay 90 rupees to exchanges and other uh, institutions. But if they hit certain volume targets, then they did not have to pay 90. Then they were given some discounts and let us say they had to pay 80. So that 10 rupees was a net benefit, right? Addition to the top line. Now SEBI said, boss, nothing doing like this. You got to charge uniform. So therefore, it is a hit on the top line of some of these exchanges. And therefore, I believe that uh, some of these discount brokers might come under a bit of an issue. Motilal is not a discount broker, by the way. So keep that in mind. But estimates say that discount brokers, no, no, let us go to that first plate, please, first. Even if you have used the name of Motilal, does not matter. Estimates say that discount brokers earn large incomes from low fees for volume targets. And some of these estimates range between 20 to 35 percent of the top line for discount brokers. This is as per what market intermediaries have tell, told us. We have not gotten this information from exchanges themselves. We will ask. We have asked some of these to give us an interview today. On the interview, we will get clarity if they come and give an interview to us about where we will get clarity about what is the extent of the fees and what part of the top line does it form. Maybe it is lower, but suffice to say, there is some income there and therefore to that extent, the stocks will take a hit today. So brace for impact on an angel one, on a, on a 5 paisa, maybe even on IFL sec, Motila Loswal and others as well. So that is the set of stocks you got to keep in mind. Okay, that is first. Now, on the positive side, the stock of the day could well be Hero Motor Corp. Total sales up 15 percent at 5.03 lakh units and domestic sales were up 16 percent at 4.91 lakh units. Remember, viewers, remember yesterday I showed you a graph or a, or a table which picked out the four or five key stocks wherein the expectations on auto sales were either bad or good. Now, in Hero Motor Corp, the expectations were of a downtick, both YOY and month on month. They have actually clocked in double digit growth, splendid numbers for the month of June. Very likely that Hero Motor Corp, which started off very positively yesterday, will actually have a day in the green today. I will be very surprised if it does not. So, watch out for Hero Motor Corp in the session today. NMDC yesterday was up 2.5%, but the June production volume has come in at 3.37 metric tons, down about million tons, down about 3.2%, and the sales volume too is down about 9%. Uh, now, remember, yesterday they also cut prices, uh, product prices yesterday. Uh, very likely, NMDC could see a bit of a downtick in the session today. So, watch out for this one in the session. Then, some stocks in news JTL Industries, the Q1 sales volume is up about 10.8 percent. This is the Q1 update that they gave. Gandhar Oil has won a 375 crore order from contract from Adnoc, maybe positive. And DCX Systems has won an order worth 1,250 crores from Larson and Tubro. So that's the third one. So watch out for all these three stocks in the session today. South Indian Bank, uh, the Q1 update, gross advances were up 11.4%. Uh, the deposits were up about single digits, yeah, 8.4%. Okay, ho hum kind of an update, nothing great. But CSB had a really good update. So that one could actually see a bit of a positivity. Gross advances were up 17.8%. at 25,000 crores. Uh, the deposits were up 22 percent. So, pretty strong deposit number as well for CSB. Watch out for this one. Could see a bit of optimism in the session today. So, that is one more to watch out for in the trade. Then, some brokerage notes. I have brought out two or three. Firstly, <coughs> excuse me, City on IGL, they were buy rating. The target price has been raised to 610 from 550. The current price is 524. Now, they are saying that the target has been raised primarily on reduction in cost of capital assumptions. And this has come down because there is a lower risk free rate now that they are penciling in. The underlying business assumptions do not change as far as city goes, but it is an upgrade on the target price. Let us see if IGL has a further reaction today. For two days on a trot now, likes of IGL and MGL have gone up. Let us see if there is more in store. So, this is the first one. Uh, then, uh, UBS has come out with a note on industrials. They say they prefer CG Power and BEL over LNT, but they do have a buy call on LNT with an SOTP based price target of 4180, the current price 3526. Now, they say that near term catalysts are limited for LNT, but so are the expectations. It is not that the street expects too much out of LNT, so that is the first part. And of course, they believe that margin execution looking better for FI 25 and 26 for, for Larsen and Tubro. Uh, but they more constructive on CG power and I believe BEL that was the first line 
I think BEL is the other one. So watch out for those stocks uh, more so. But LNT2, they are constructive. And then there is a city note on Vodafone or V. They have upgraded the stock to a, from a neutral to a buy. The target price is 23 versus 15 earlier. They say that they are enthused by the shift in stance by Geo towards monetization. So that's one. They believe the recent tariff hikes at the higher end of consensus estimates and the peak of the competitive intensity may be behind. They also say that positive developments on the AGR case could actually lead to a bull case target of 28 rupees on Vodafone. City has been the most conservative, by the way, on V. And they have raised the target price to 23, which is what I was saying that I think the street is very constructive on telecom. So for watch out, dips might well get bought into. This is a bit of profit booking that we're seeing after the news is out of the bag. But watch out, there could be some more upsides here. So these are a few uh, that I have noticed in the session today. Dam Capital has a note on Anantraj. I think they have raised the target price to 620. So you need to watch out for that as well. The Jobs Peak Index has come in very muted. And therefore, you could well see some bit of reactions on Nokri or Info Edge. So that's the second stock today. You got to watch out for that as well. Um, and, and, and there are some... Um, IT preview notes that have come in. Remember viewers, uh, Manav Chopra of Nuama, about 10 days ago, was went very bullish on IT. This index has done really well over the last 10-15 days. We get him today at 9.45 on NTV Profit to try and understand where is he, where, what does he see now on some of the IT names. He was constructive and persistent, which was up 6% yesterday and some others. So he got that call spot on. We talked to him today to try and understand what's next for the IT companies as well as some of the tire companies. So that's a conversation you may not want to miss. But thanks so much for tuning in to the Trade Setup today.